Hey, this is Adam Ornelas, and I'm giving a personal breakdown of Broadway Bomb 2024, which I did pretty well in this year. The Second Angle is filmed by Studio39.nyc, Punit on the eboard for New York Longboard Association and New York City Broadway Bomb. Check out them for the full raw run and race commentary. So Broadway Bomb starts up this hill, and these days the police actually help block traffic, which is pretty nice. I, I'm glad that I'm not dealing with worrying about getting arrested or something. This uphill section, I prefer the push. You can see Titus pushing there. As long as you can get out past all the people and not get tripped, pushing I think is faster if you're the faster longboarder. So here's this second angle I was talking about, filmed by Punit on the eboard. You can see that whistle in my mouth. Last time I did Broadway Bomb and got third, I was clapping and yelling the whole time and I'm not really like that outgoing of a dude, so I was like, I'm gonna bring a whistle. And other than my mouth being really dry, it was great. Anyway, the starting of this race is pretty chill starting. It's uh, smooth, flat, uh, you don't wanna burn all your energy. Um, I think of Broadway Bomb not like a timed race, but a race against other people. So I'll get out here, cruise, uh, break the group apart, but don't work too hard. And all these eboards and everything, plus the police ahead on the motorcycles are still able to block traffic at this point. Pretty nice. So as you're settling into the Upper West Side portion of the race, it's smooth, straight sailing. Um, the traffic comes across pretty quickly, but other than that, it's pretty relaxed and it's oddly quiet after you just start this hectic race. And now you're alone in the front with Daniel and Titus, both former winners. So we're all together. Um, we're kind of cruising, keeping an eye on each other. Um, there's no sense in going all out if everyone else is going to draft you, right? So we're just kind of like keeping it steady so people don't catch up. Uh, we relax a little too much and Jason starts catching up. You can see Titus look behind himself and yell at me, Adam, we got to pick up the pace. And basically with this sort of race, you want to break the elastic. Like all of a sudden you want to attack. You can't just slowly increase the pace. And it's crazy how much faster I've gotten um, moving somewhere flat compared to the last time I was here when I just finished living in the mountains. So I'm blowing my whistle through the intersections preemptively just so that way pedestrians are kind of like on edge and looking out. Titus is um, kind of like my New York City sage. He shows me the maps and last year when I, or the last time when I did Broadway Bomb, he kind of like guided me the whole way. This year, I really memorized the maps and basically knew where I was going to T, so I didn't feel like I had to follow the Titus. And I think that was a nice strategy because I didn't burn my muscles quite as much slowing down and sprinting. It's a, it's a lot nicer when you can take the intersection first rather than second because the cars are kind of moving steadily and you know what they're going to do. You know what the pedestrians are going to do, but once you're behind someone, uh, the cars will stop and then, you know, that doesn't calculate as well in your brain as knowing what's coming. This is a perfect example of Titus getting cut off because he's following me through traffic. Um, instead of just slightly slowing down and letting the car zoom by, he has to turn around them. So this race ended up being an average of maybe like 16.1 miles per hour, including all the random fence jumping. And part of the speed is because you have to accelerate to your top speed as soon as you can. So since we're limited with a top speed of like 17 to 20 miles per hour, depending on the gradient out in New York at least, what you're doing is you're essentially doing 10 strong pushes, uh, violent. You're using your core and everything. Um, it's like doing 10 box jumps. And my heart rate went up to 200 beats per minute during this race. It doesn't even look like that, but you do. And then you're just staying arrow when you're at that top speed. Uh, starting on, I was probably a little overcautious. Uh, you know, slowing down, maybe when I didn't need to. But that's all right, I'm not in it for time. I think uh, guys who know the city better, like Kiefer and Titus, uh, you know, they can go for time, but I don't think I have enough experience to really safely do that. At the end of the day, my goal is still to come out here and be safe. I, I think maybe looking at this, you might be saying, ha, huh, that doesn't look very safe. But for me, I mean, I have a pretty good sense of the traffic and the traffic's really slow. And, you know, I, I can kind of know what's happening and if I'm going to make it or not. And I wouldn't do something that I feel really uncomfortable with. All in all, I still think that like racing Broadway Bomb 
through traffic and everything is way safer than when I used to race bikes and like cycling crit races where you crash at 35 miles per hour and get asphalt in your face. Here we're going like what 20 miles per hour and the cars are going 10 miles per hour. So even though it looks pretty crazy, if you have very good technical skills on a board, you're not going to put yourself somewhere where you're going to hurt yourself. But if you're new to this, I think you really could hurt yourself just because you might make silly mistakes and you can't make silly mistakes around traffic. So, you know, if you have good handling, um, you know, like professional dancer Daniel Lindsay, that means you can just hop off your board whenever you need to. And, you know, that's a lot better than being on a bike or something because you can bail really easily. So something you'll also notice watching these videos, and I've been doing this for a while, is as you're coming up to these crossroads in New York, they're all one way, which means that I'm switching left and right uh, to give yourself the most optimal time. So here I'm going straight through a one way and I go to the right so that way I have the longest amount of time to see what cars are coming. This is the interesting part of the race. Um, you go through, you know, the nice west side, upper west side, and then you hit Columbus Circle and kind of everything clears. You gotta, you gotta filter into the traffic on the circle, but essentially this is where you know stuff is about to hit the fan because you're gonna hit Times Square and everything after Times Square is where it gets a little bit more complicated. So once you get here, um, the navigation becomes pretty complicated. See, Times Square is closed for pedestrians, so you know, like, there's a lot of pedestrians, duh, it's Times Square. But Times Square also, and Broadway going through it, has all these different pedestrian malls. And that makes it exceptionally complicated racing, because you either need to take some side roads, or you need to race through the pedestrian mall. And, you know, cars are simple, pedestrians are not predictable. And this is why other people haven't won the race, and this is where I slow down so I can ride with everyone else. Other famous LDP, you know, distance skaters like Jeff, Vine, and Paul Kent never were able to win this race because of the navigation and traffic. And that's why I wanted this one so bad. So this is where I could easily lose the race. And I'm looking for the left turn. I know I'm turning left to get on the fifth to get around the closed part of Times Square. But, uh, you know, I don't... <laughs> I'm not entirely confident because I've been looking at this online. And I'm getting locked out by these buses. I was gonna do that, that looks stupid. So you just hop off, run, do not hesitate. You have to commit to everything you're doing in Broadway, Bob, never hesitate. Otherwise you lose time or, you know, the whenever you hesitate in longboarding, whether it be downhill or pushing in a traffic, you always have to make sure the commit, know what you're doing, and don't hesitate, which I really love. It's a good feeling. It's like when you're going super fast downhill and you gotta drop a slide and you're committed to it. Don't half-ass it. You gotta go all the way in to be safe. And when I say that, I mean just, uh, you know, be, be clear of mind, don't panic, take a deep breath, always be safe, do not panic. So Daniel's caught up to me at this point after my silly running move through the city. Um, I still maintain that running's not too bad of a move if you need to get through pedestrians and stuff just because you got that ability to strafe. Uh, this is a pretty lucky one. Um, you know, sometimes there's a ton of pedestrians or bikes in the bike lane through Times Square and it's pretty hairy skating through there. So we were pretty lucky not to have to skate through that. And that would normally be where a lot of the interesting footage comes from. but. You know, we managed to get past that pretty easily. Um, so at this point, I think Titus is right behind me. Daniel Lindsay's up ahead. And Titus is yelling at me from behind to not let him get a lead because Daniel starts sprinting. Um, Daniel's a rower, which means he's like a really powerful guy. Daniel's like a large, muscular guy who um, dances. And when you're dancing, that means you're doing a lot of jumping and you have a lot of sprint acceleration. So somebody who's like a huge cardiovascular engine, like Daniel being a rower and then also being muscular, you don't want to let him get away. But at this point, we're going through traffic and I know where we are. And that makes it a lot better because I can kind of control my own pacing and not have to accelerate. So as long as Daniel's on the horizon, I'm happy. So I'm just letting him stay ahead here, keeping an eye on him. Um, you know, I really haven't raced with Daniel uh, where I can see him, last Broadway bomb, I didn't know he was there. And I, I've heard a lot about how he is scarily fast at accelerating. So my idea is keep an eye on him, um, you know, see what he does. Kind of like in a other racing, you want to see if he attacks. And 
see how strong he is, suss out how strong they are, and then I can counterattack because I'm not going to sprint him at the end since he's such a strong guy. Um, yeah, so you have to go through the head-on traffic here. And admittedly, it sounds bad, but you know, as Titus said, it's uh, safer than the <laughs> safe, safer than accidentally having to deal with those food delivery people who are insane. They will not stop for you whatsoever. So at this point, we're going through another pedestrian area, which means we've got to go left through all the stuff. <laughs> and I hate going through the stuff. So this time we just go down the road. To the left of you last time we went through like some pedestrian festival farmer's market thing and it was awful. You can hear Titus behind me still yelling at pedestrians to get out of the way. Um, and he's also yelling at me not to lose Daniel because at this point Daniel has gotten pretty far ahead. Really can't let that guy out of your sight. Like kind of as an aside, I really love this race because this race is culturally like this is the longboard race out of all races. I think uh, Broadway Bomb might be the oldest longboarding race still in existence. It's been around for over 20 years. I know that for a fact. And it's happened every year. And I, I just love the history behind it with guys like Kiefer just being the king of Broadway Bomb. I always grew up watching this and being like, dang, I wonder if I could ever do this. So it was pretty surreal to be racing up at the front of Broadway Bomb with uh, you know my buddies Titus and Daniel. You, you really feel like you're living in a movie when you're racing a race like this. Um, all your civility kind of goes out of your body and comes back when you finish, as uh, Ayana Banks put it. <laughs> Credit where credit's due, Ayana Banks uh, won the non-binary category, and Janaya won the women's category with Mandy Bilbao and Corey Wolf coming first, second, and third. So out on the bike path, our group has kind of congregated back together, and we've got two more major obstacles. We've got two more park-type areas to get through, so this is about to get funny. So we're going split-screen right now. Here we go. Um, Titus switches for the park, and I go one way, he goes the other. Um, Titus is swerving around the pedestrians, and I was thinking, well, maybe I can get through this bike path, because this is where I went with Titus last time, and then I realized I need to get back on that road, because I know where I am. You can see me right over there running and <laughs> Titus back there. I had no idea he was there. So I filter back in. Titus is yelling at the pedestrians to get out of the way and telling me to hurry up because we're going to lose Daniel. <laughs> so yeah, the pedestrians, man. Uh, never take the pedestrian path. It's the, the, you know, like there's cars in the road, but there's always space between cars in the road. You know, so yeah, just serving through some pedestrians, going through some traffic. This is some classic Broadway bomb footage right here. So I'm just following this e-unicycle. Uh, honestly, like going through these smaller gaps, the e-boards and the e-vehicles are way bigger than we are on the long boards and I always get caught behind them. So sometimes I swerve between the traffic just to get out of the way of the e-boards and stuff. Daniel takes a smart move here and he pulls a little detour to go around this traffic issue. So the conserve energy and push when you need to plan is kind of working out at this point. Uh, keeping Daniel on the horizon, I knew we were approaching the park and this is where I knew stuff was gonna hit the fan. There's always some sort of festival going on Saturday here. T Titus can attest to that. He's like, yeah, you gotta get someone to tell you what's going on. We had no idea what's going on. So I'm just like, all right, I guess I'm jumping the fence. Once again, you know, like, you just got to do it seamlessly. Do not hesitate. Accelerate and keep on moving. So at this point, you know, Daniel's to the right of me, so that worked out pretty well. Daniel had to scoot over the fence, and I got a nice little vault over the fence, and that gave me some space to catch up to him. Uh, Titus is behind us, and we're going to hit this, you know, denser traffic. Daniel and I, not being um, regular New Yorkers, this is a good place for Titus to catch up to us again. So like, I'm riding a pretty long board, the Pantheon Wiggler, and it's fine going through traffic and swerving between cars. People are like, ah, that's not enough turning radius, but you know, it's a pretty loose front truck, which let me one foot steer easily. And that's a lot safer being able to steer at all times. And you'll see it's more than enough to swerve around the cars. Otherwise I lose grip anyway. So you don't need that much. Another thing, um, I, 
you might have been able to see this in the footage, but you've got to be really vigilant for people turning right. So I'm always watching these cars, always trying to be on the left of them if I can, because you never know when they're going to turn right. So yeah, Titus was following us through there. You just saw him. Um, I think this is the last time we see Titus. Once I get through the park, I know, all right, this is a straightaway. Uh, there's no more complex things. We've just got like another three miles or whatever to the bowl. So I'm taking a breather. I've got Daniel Lindsay in my sight. And the strategy is essentially, I need to drop Daniel Lindsay so he can't try it out kicking me in a sprint at the end. And I don't think Daniel is feeling as good as he has in past races. I, he, you know, he told me he's feeling a little bit slower. But uh, that became kind of apparent to me because you put out these little testing attacks to see if he can hang or not. So here I'm just going ahead at like a steady pace and seeing how much of a gap I can grow on him. But, you know, you got to be able to hold the gap and I make some mistakes in traffic in a little bit, which don't end up panning out. Yeah, I these pedestrians, man, the pedestrians are the tough part, but I got a pretty good eye for pedestrians. I feel like just living in Madison, Wisconsin, where you have tons and tons of college students. Um, honestly, like when I'm leaving class now that I'm back in grad school, there's like five times as many students as there are like in most of these streets because it's just like Times Square every day when 70,000 students come out at noon. I think Daniel just hit that car back there gently. <laughs> So, got a little bit of gap on him. I go over this rough patch and Daniel catches up because he goes over the smooth patch. So everything's back together and Titus is now pretty far behind us, but um, coming up is what kind of looks like a sketchy scene, but in reality, this all, you know, happens in slow motion for me and it didn't feel sketchy at all. Um, you know, I just made like a little bit of a miscalculation and I actually went too close to a car on the right. The one on the left, I was already clear of, so let me break it down. So I, I kind of like seen through these pedestrians. I see this car on the left slowing down. Um, then I go a little too far on the right and I just like dodge that van. But as I do that, I uh, slip my foot off the board accidentally. So if you're gonna watch this in slow motion, you think I fall, but no, I'm already past the car and I'm just slipping past the van and then my foot flies off. And what I'm doing is I'm not actually falling. I'm getting down to my knees getting back to my board, and this all felt like it was in super slow motion. It didn't feel like it was fast at all. Get back to my board, and then I take off, because I know, like, this could be the moment where I lose the race if I'm not careful. So, Daniel's on the horizon, and I'm feeling pretty good, because this is a straightaway. As long as I have an eye on him, I know I can catch him. So, conserve your energy, spend a safe amount of time getting back to Daniel without working too hard. So that way you have enough energy to pull in another attack and create a gap rather than have him just speed up and follow you. It's The gap thing is mostly psychological, like there's a little bit of drafting and longboarding, yes, but it, a lot of it's creating like this psychological thing where you got to make someone feel like they can't catch up with you, which is something Daniel's really good at doing, having a strong kick at the end of races a lot of the time. Um, so. Uh, I'm on the back of Daniel and kind of like sussing out how good he's feeling and if you look at the horizon I could sense that the rest of the race has this little bit of an uphill and I'm a lightweight guy so I'm like well I better put in an attack and really like break down the spirits when I can so this is where you invest and commit into just like one strong attack and never look back so no looking back at this point I'm pushing away and this is where I kind of like, I'm just giving a, a good accelerate up speed as fast as you can and then swap feet. And this is what I train to do. And I feel like most at home, just holding a steady pace. So this felt really good. And I end up being able to get a nice 20 second gap on Daniel, which uh, becomes unrecoverable at this point. So we're basically uh, scot-free going back home. So this angle, once again, is by Studio 39 NYC, filmed by Punit for New York Longboard Association and NYC Broadway Bomb. Check them out for the full raw run and race commentary. Whew, got that one out. So, here we go. I'm riding into the finish. Um, this car's getting in the way. At this point, I basically know, I've got it in the bag, look behind myself for the first time, yell, heck yeah. You know, keeping it, maybe, yeah, keeping it PG. 
And yeah, roll in. That was an awesome feeling, knowing that I've been like able to complete Broadway Bomb and cross off another iconic long ba board race on my list. Anyway, we did a great job with five of the six podium places being on my pro model wheel. How cool is that? Uh, thanks to my sponsor, Pantheon Longboards. Jeff just gets it, man. He makes the best equipment and I get to help it design it. Thanks for riding our stuff and thanks for saying hey. That was an awesome weekend.